the Payload Operations Integration Center at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, is the heartbeat for space station research operations, and it is where Lori Meggs is this morning with a report on the start of Expedition 40 Science. Well, there's plenty to keep this control center buzzing 24-7, and one of the men responsible for making sure that everyone is doing his or her job to make sure that research is conducted is Mike Shell. Mike, thanks for joining us today. You're a Payload Operations Director here. Mike, tell us about your work and what you do. Oh, good morning, Lori. Uh, the Payload Operations Directors are the real-time operations managers here at Marshall. Uh, our team manages all the U.S. Uh, payloads aboard the International Space Station. Uh, this includes the U.S. Lab, ESA, and the JAXA module including our external payloads and our position reports directly to the JSC flight director. So Expedition 40, we always say with a new crew comes new and exciting research. We also have some ongoing research. So let's go ahead and, and jump in and, and okay. talk about a few things. The first one is Opals. Yeah, Opals. Uh, this is uh, Opals being removed from the SpaceX uh, trunk back in April. And uh, this main objective is to really test laser technologies to transmit data to Earth. And the la laser uh, data transmission, they're much faster than our traditional RF transmissions. Um, they've been checking this out for the last six weeks. Hopefully we're gonna have a uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully Opals will have their first successful uh, video data transmission here in the next few days. Uh, but they've been doing a lot of great work and, and uh, we're excited about what they're doing. Uh, a lot of what they're doing is uh, handled by some of their young engineers at JPL. Yeah, it's uh, a, lot of, a lot of young guys doing that work absolutely. and, and they're so excited about the work they're doing. Yeah, and this is a HDAV. It was just installed recently, and uh, it's uh, the high-definition uh, Earth viewing, and uh, it's uh, four high-definition cameras mounted externally. Uh, they are commercial cameras, and uh, one of the things is just evaluating these commercial cameras for future missions. Mm -hmm. um, these, uh, a lot of this uh, hardware was designed by some of our high school students in the Hunch program, and uh, one of the exciting wow. things is uh, a lot of views on Ustream. Oh, yeah, yeah, a lot. I, I, I catch myself looking at it. Uh, next, we're doing a little gardening in space, Ab right? Absolutely. Uh, Veggies, our new greenhouse aboard the ISS, it was developed at KSC. Uh, we've started our first garden. We've uh, got some red lettuce growing. It's been growing about three weeks. Uh, Commander Swanson, he's kind of become our uh, resident gardener, we call him. <laughs> Somebody's got to have a green thumb. Absolutely. Uh, some of the plants, uh, we're growing them just really to validate the uh, veggie hardware that's up there. And uh, we'll be harvesting these uh, next week and uh, we'll be freezing them and bring them back uh, later in the summer. Nobody can sneak a, a bite or anything up there. Not yet, <laughs> uh, but that's kind of the goal. Maybe in the future, we'll, we'll see right. how it goes. That'll be very interesting. Another thing that we also like to talk about is, or what's very important, now we like to talk about it, but the risk to crew members about radiation. We need to study this to understand it more, right? Tell us about this experiment. Uh, the Radian uh, 2 is the second run of the, this experiment. It's kind of a passive experiment, but uh, it's sponsored by the Canadian uh, space Agency will have eight neutron bubble detectors. They look like little vials, basically, and uh, they'll be placed in various uh, locations around the uh, ISS. And uh, it's going to help us better understand health risks that our astronauts are exposed to, especially uh, neutron exposure. And how these work, these little bubble detectors, basically, when a neutron strikes the tube, a tiny bubble is created. Oh, wow. So that's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting technology. And uh, we're planning on uh, deploying these next week, and they'll be out for seven days. Uh, they'll be located around various locations around the, uh, the space station. And once that's over with, we'll bring those back in, collect them up, and uh, use the Russian bubble reader to, to evaluate the data. All right, well, we really want to uh, talk a little bit about ocular health, which is also important to crew members. Yeah, today, today um, uh, what the crew is primarily doing is ultrasounds. They're doing ultrasounds on their eyes and heart, ocular and cardiac evaluations. They're doing that all afternoon. Um, so that's an, an interesting experiment. Uh, uh, Commander uh, Swanson, this is, I think, is about his 60th day, so he's collecting data for a 60-day run. And, of course, with Reed and Gerst that are up there, right. this is their first full week in Expedition right. 40, so we're collecting some baseline data for them. So this is data we collect over, over the entire increment, and this just happens to be the first time for them. Let's talk a little bit about the training that, that you guys help with, This talking about the new crew. Uh, how much training do they get before they go? And, and it continues while they're on board, right? 
right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the crew's been training for about two years, so this is not something new to them. They're they're training all the time. Uh, during that two-year period, uh, they they probably took about 110 courses, which is wow. that's a lot if you start yeah. thinking about it. That's a lot of classwork, but it doesn't it doesn't stop there. Uh, you know, a lot of the experiments, uh, they'll do some refresher courses or we'll provide them reviews before they actually do some of the more complex experiments. Right. And then on some of those um, simpler, we'll call them simpler experiments, mm -hmm. they actually do computer-based training once they get on board. So that may be the first time they've seen it or just, uh, you know, they may not have studied it a lot before then. Right. So we do a lot of training on board. It helps with just the training protocol as we go along. And they're really helping you get the word out too. A lot of tweets from Reed. Absolutely. <laughs> Reed, Reed is a is a tweet uh, maniac so far. He's had some great tweets. We like that. Uh, you know, we've had a few uh, uh, tweeters up there, I guess, over the years, and, and they tend to go by Astro, whatever their name is, mm -hmm. and his is Astro Reed, and he's picked up about 20,000 followers this week. Wow. And I was looking at his uh, feed last night, and he's got some great photos, so, you know, people, you know, they should be following him. He's Astro Reed on, on Twitter.